Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Carrie and today we have two special guests with us as you can see. Last week's episode we featured Audrey and Audrey made chicken empanadas and today Sarah will be making cold ginger chicken. So if you missed Audrey's episode from last week, please make sure you go check it out. Uh, Sarah's going to be showing us how she makes her ginger chicken, her cold ginger chicken. And we're going to see which dish wins. It is a competition, right? So we are going from west to east. Today is the east. Are we ready? You're going right. down. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. All right, Sarah, so tell us a little bit about this dish first. Uh, this is a very popular dish in especially Canton uh, called ginger chicken. Mm -hmm. It's really simple, very minimal ingredients, very minimal cook and prep time as well. Um, obviously we're gonna do a bit of a simplified version so it's something that you guys can do at home, very simple. Mm -hmm. um, and we also with the Cold, uh, with the ginger green onion sauce, it's actually very delicious that it even works with tofu as well. Oh, I've never tried it with tofu, but yeah, in fine. the Chinese restaurants, I know it's one of my favorite dishes, so I'm glad that you decided to make that today. And it's also very healthy. Ginger, onion, I mean, these ingredients are all very healthy ingredients, so, yes. right? But usually they use breast. Uh, normally, they actually use the whole chicken, oh, traditionally okay, whole chicken. with bone on and skin and everything. Ah. Uh, for the sake of time and just for the easiness and accessibility for you guys and for us, okay. um, we're just going to be using chicken thighs today. What are we doing first? Uh, first, um, we are going to be cooking our chicken. Um, we're going to boil our chicken in water. Okay. All right, so we are going to go over we're this way. Head to the stove. All right, so we have our chicken, salt. All right, so we are going to put our chicken inside of the boiling water. I already have a pot boiling right here to save time. Mm -hmm. uh, very important safety tip. Anytime you have a pot of boiling anything and you know there's steam coming out, always lift the pot lid towards you so that steam doesn't hit you. Because I, working in restaurants, I've burnt myself many, many times on my wrist lifting up a pot lid. I've never known that, but that makes a lot of sense. Can you tell us a little bit about what um, your experience working in restaurants? Oh, I've been, um, I've worked in restaurants for about 10 years. Um, worked in all kinds of cuisine, fine dining, casual, kind of like mid, mid in between ones as well. Um, cooked Asian food, um, Mexican food, fusion. Wow. Yeah. So what was your favorite type of food to cook? Um, definitely Italian cuisine, um, the fine dining one, that was one of my favorite ones to work at. Um, mostly because I get to taste like top quality ingredients. Um, mm. Yeah, it's really, it's fun trying all the different fancy things. Nice. We have our pot of boiling water before we put our chicken in. Uh, we are going to sprinkle some salt in there to kind of season the chicken as it boils. Okay. Um, we get that in. Now we're gonna slowly drop in the chicken. I mean, make sure you don't closer. wanna dump it in at the same, all at once. Is this all right, what I'm doing? Yes, that is perfectly fine. Just carefully drop them in so the hot water didn't splash on you. Covered, and we're gonna let that cook for 10 to 15 minutes, um, and then usually about the 10 minute mark, we'll test to see if it's ready. And then in the meantime, we can go make our sauce. So how do we make our ginger chicken, cold ginger chicken sauce? It's really simple. Literally, all it is is just ginger, green onion, or spring onion, as some people call it, um, and oil as well. Both? Sesame and regular oil? There's actually two ways to do that. Oh, um, nice. The way I do it, I would like to do it with just the... Normally, we use peanut oil, but vegetable oil or canola oil works as well mm -hmm. um, as the base for the sauce. Mm -hmm. And then the sesame oil uh, traditionally goes inside the sauce as well. Um, but I personally like to put the sesame oil on the chicken itself, um, so it's more has more punch to it. Oh, okay, yeah, so more, oh, it gives that kick of sesame flavor. Mm -hmm. Nice. Um, so first things first, we are going to cut up our mince up our green onion. Make sure when you're buying green onions. Try to go for the younger ones, not for the um, the ones that are like thinner, have thinner stalks. 
compared to the ones that are like really fat because those do be a bit more bitter. What's great about uh, the green onion sauce is that you can keep it in your fridge and save it for other things as well. Uh, you don't necessarily have to use it with chicken. Uh, a lot of times, like I myself, like to just eat it with plain white rice. Or use the tofu too. And right? tofu as well. Um, it also makes a good topping, like to add to your ramen. Mm -hmm. um, as a little kick, you know, something different as Ooh. well. So, you are gonna take off, cut off the roots, and then you're just gonna start really nice. Did you learn how to cook while on the job, like working at the restaurant, or did you, do you have specialized cooking training? Um, a lot of it, a lot of my cooking training has come from on the job, but also I grew up watching cooking shows with my sister. I remember our favorite show was called How to Boil Water, um, which was co-hosted by these two really funny entertaining people. Um, I wonder where they are now. But I mean, cooking is not Sarah's main job. What is your main job, Sarah? I am, current, I am currently the stage manager of Honolulu Theater for Youth. Um, that is our local theater company for kids um, that's been around for over 50 years. And I am lucky enough to be working as part of the company. Um, for, this would be about my fifth year with them. And so I help run and organize all the different shows, that, the shows and performances that we have going on. Uh, we minced up our green onions. Now we are gonna do our ginger. Um, as some of you may know, ginger is very strong. Um, some people absolutely love ginger. Uh, my mom I love likes ginger. My mom likes to put a lot. I like to go more on like the lighter side. Okay. But obviously, you still need to put enough to taste it because that's what makes it cold ginger chicken. Exactly. What I like to do with ginger too is because I like to put it in smoothies. I like to cut all my ginger at once, and then I cut it into like half an inch cubes, and then I'll freeze it so I don't have to cut ginger again for a long time. Like if I'm already cutting ginger, I may as well cut the whole knob. All right, so now that we've peeled a bit of our ginger, we're left with the skin and the actual meat. Uh, for those of you that are frugal, you can actually hold on to your ginger skins, um, put, and then when you next time you make a stock or a broth, uh, you can feel free to put these in a little sachet and then just drop that in as a nice little kick to your broth. So again, the hard part of this dish is already done. We've minced up our green onion, we've minced up our ginger, okay. our chicken where it's ready to take out and put okay. into an ice bath. Now that our chicken has boiled for 10 to 15 minutes, uh, we are gonna test to see if it is ready. Um, so you're gonna find the thickest part of your chicken and you're gonna poke it with a chopstick, like so. And pretty much what you wanna look for is if there's any, uh, no, if there's any red coming out, that means oh, it still needs to cook a little bit okay. longer. But it looks like here our chicken is good. So now what we are going to do is we are going to immediately put it into an ice bath to blanch it. And what this does is when you cook up, when you heat up chicken, the meat gets really loose. Okay. And so you want to immediately put it into cold water so it constricts and it seals in all the juices. Oh. Otherwise, um, you're gonna lose all that nice, tasty that flavor. flavor. All right, so the next step with making our sauce, now that we've diced up our green onion and our ginger, mm -hmm. is we're gonna combine it with oil and a bit of salt, and that's our sauce. It's that simple. Okay, you're gonna heat up the oil. We're gonna heat up the oil. This is where it's gonna get really fragrant. So now that our oil is hot enough, we're gonna carefully put in the ginger first because that takes a bit longer to heat up. So you're gonna just carefully lay that in. Ooh, I like the sound of the sizzle. Right? Yeah. As long as you don't burn it. There. Yes. And again, this whole process alone is gonna take less than a minute. You just wanna really? heat it up to open up all those uh, these pores. Now we're just in our green onion. Oh, this reminds me so much of Reed's fish that he makes, the Chinese style fish. Very, very similar process. Yeah. And just turn off the heat as the oil is already plenty hot. I see the ginger starting to burn. I can smell the ginger too, and it smells really nice. 
drain out our chicken. Now that the chicken's drained, we're gonna take out, we're gonna lightly spoon. Sesame oil? Sesame oil. Very, very little. That is a lot. Um, now a little bit goes, uh, sesame oil is very potent but very delicious. The thing is a little bit goes a long oh, way. Jenna. And so what I like to do is I like to rub the sesame oil onto the chicken so the flavor stays directly on it. Um, a lot of places they put the sesame oil with the ginger green onion sauce that's more traditional. Mm. Um, but you know I like to do this because it's fun. It tastes just as delicious. Okay. So we're gonna take our chicken, we're gonna slice it uh, against the grain. Like you see, the chicken meat has lines on it. You wanna kinda intersect it so it doesn't fall apart, it doesn't shred. Mm -hmm. So you have these nice, kinda like solid chunks of chicken like that. Um, again, if you wanna be healthy, we can also use tofu as well. Okay. Um, so we just need to slice that and then we're ready to eat. Okay, so we are now gonna be trying Sarah's ginger, cold ginger chicken. Are we ready? I'm ready. All right. Never had this before. You never had ginger chicken? Never. Oh. I'm excited. Right. Put the whole thing in my mouth at the same time. Mmm. It's very moist. Mmm. Mmm. I can taste the ginger. Good. Mmm. -hmm. Excellent. Now you can try with the tofu as well. Okay. All right. Do you eat tofu? No, oh, there's cheese. Peanut butter. <laughs> I do eat tofu. Audrey, what? It's a lot of rum. That's good. Mm. It's very good. It's really good. The ginger is crispy. Is it supposed to be crispy? Mm-mm. No. -mm. Oh. oh, I actually like the crispy. Yeah, kind of it's nice with the crisp. And then, it feels like refreshing in my mouth. Mm -hmm. All right, so after you know all the taste testing and all everything that we've done, um, we've came to a consensus, and this is what I thought because, as Jenny said, the two dishes were very, very different. Mm. However, I would say for simplicity and for if you need to make something really fast and easy, mm. Sarah's dish wins. Let's give Sarah's dish a hat. Good job. For flavor, um, I would say Audrey's had more flavor in that sense, and so Audrey's dish would win. Oh. So they're very different, and they, they also, they, I, I think they serve two different purposes. What do you guys think? Oh, String! <laughs> no, kidding. Uh, no, I thought Sarah's dish was great. It was my first time eating um, chicken in that uh, way with the ginger. Um, so it was good, and it looked simple, and looked like any parent or person in the rush could do it. I liked Audrey's empanadas because they are very very filling very full of flavor and then the pull the pull apart cheese is, is also fantastic um and you can always just cook a large batch and then like eat it later which is mm -hmm. great it's like a nice grab and go especially when you're on the road for breakfast and you just need something to eat in your car just grab a couple and you're good to go hey guys so this is carrie from the future and i'm just editing this vlog or this video and I wanted to just come on here and end it. In that last clip that you saw, there was someone knocking at the door, so it threw me off. And I forgot to film an ending for this video. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed watching both Audrey and Sarah cook and kind of share their recipes in the kitchen. If you want to see more of them, please make sure you let me know in the comments. And make sure to like this video and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.